40,000 years ago, on the edge of Ice Age Europe, the land is locked in ice. Forests are thin. Darkness arrives early. Fire becomes the center of life. Around the fire sit hunter-gatherers, carrying only what they can move, living in constant motion across a continent that has no borders, only seasons. Their skin is dark, their hair is dark. Nothing about them looks unusual, at least not yet. But when the light shifts, something is different, not obvious, not meaningful, not even noticed. Much later, this difference will have a name. Blue eyes. For more than a century, we believed that blue eyes, blonde hair, and white skin evolved together as a single response to life in the North. We were wrong. Ancient DNA has revealed a far stranger story. One where these traits emerged separately in different places, thousands of years apart, and only converged very recently. And that story explains why Europe looks the way it does today. The story begins with the eyes. A small regulatory mutation known as RS12913832 altered how a gene called OCA2 was expressed in the iris. It didn't remove pigment from the body. It didn't lighten skin or hair. It only reduced melanin in the eye. Ancient genomes from sites in Bulgaria and Romania show that this mutation existed over 40,000 years ago, near the very beginning of modern humans in Europe. For tens of thousands of years, Europe was home to people who were blue-eyed, but still dark-skinned and dark-haired. Blue eyes came first. Blonde hair tells a completely different story. Its key mutation appears not in Europe, but in Siberia, among a population known as ancient North Eurasians. Around 16,000 years ago, a variant in the KITLG gene reduced pigment specifically in hair follicles. These people were often blonde-haired, but they were not blue-eyed. For most of the Ice Age, the traits lived in separate worlds, blue eyes in the west, blonde hair in the east. Everything changed after the glaciers retreated. For thousands of years, Europe had been fragmented, not by borders, but by ice, forests, and distance. But as the climate warmed, northern lands that had been uninhabitable for millennia began to open, and people moved. From the south and west came the descendants of western hunter-gatherers carrying the ancient blue eye mutation. From the east came groups shaped by ancient North Eurasian ancestry, carrying the blonde hair allele. They did not replace one another. They mixed. In Scandinavia, these lineages overlapped more intensely than anywhere else. This region became a genetic meeting point a place where traits that evolved thousands of kilometers apart could finally recombine in the same people. Not instantly, not uniformly, but persistently. This is where blue eyes and blonde hair began to travel together. Over time, selection turned rarity into pattern. In Northern Europe, especially Scandinavia and the Baltic, blue eyes reached very high frequencies, often 70 to 90%. Blonde hair followed a similar path, becoming common in Sweden, Norway, Finland, and along the Baltic coast. Move south into Central Europe, and the pattern softens. Blue eyes drop to around 30 or 40%. Hair color becomes mixed. In Southern Europe, these traits grow rarer, not absent, but diluted. What we see today is a gradient, shaped by where people settled and mixed. 
but one major piece was still missing. For most of this story, Europe was not light-skinned. Even as blue eyes and blonde hair spread in the north, most people still had darker skin tones. Ice Age and Mesolithic hunter-gatherers had vitamin D-rich diets. Fish and wild game supplied what sunlight did not. There was no pressure to lighten skin. That changed with agriculture. As farming spread, diets shifted to cereals. Vitamin D dropped. In northern latitudes, sunlight became essential. Only then did genes like SLC24A5 and SLC45A2 begin to rise, slowly reducing melanin in the skin. This process was gradual, uneven, and regional. Widespread white skin is not an Ice Age trait. It is one of Europe's last major adaptations. And once these traits finally came together in the north, they did not stay there. Then came the Vikings. Often remembered only as warriors, the Vikings were also traders, settlers, and genetic carriers. Between the 8th and 11th centuries, Scandinavian populations expanded outward, across the North Sea, into the British Isles, Iceland, Greenland, and parts of continental Europe. They did not invent these traits they redistributed them. In places like coastal Britain and Ireland, genetic studies still detect elevated Scandinavian ancestry, especially in regions once dominated by Norse settlement. This is why blue eyes and lighter hair appear more frequently in parts of Scotland, Northern England and Ireland than geography alone would predict. The Viking Age acted as a genetic amplifier spreading traits already common in the north into new populations. But the story does not stop in Europe. From the 15th century onward, European populations began crossing oceans on an unprecedented scale. Colonization, settlement and migration carried European genetic patterns far beyond their original homelands. In North America, early settlers came disproportionately from northern and northwestern Europe. Britain, Scandinavia, the Low Countries, and later Germany. As a result, blue eyes and blonde hair became common in the United States and Canada, not because these traits evolved there, but because Europe arrived there. The same pattern repeats in Australia and New Zealand, where settler populations drew heavily from Britain and Northern Europe. What looks like a global distribution is actually European regional history projected outward. These traits did not spread simply because people moved. They persisted because once combined, they were no longer neutral. In low light environments, blue eyes may have offered subtle visual advantages. In agricultural societies with limited vitamin D, lighter skin became increasingly favored. And in small, closely connected populations, rare traits became socially visible, sometimes preferred, sometimes simply reinforced by chance. Selection, culture, and migration worked together, not toward an ideal, not toward an identity, but toward frequency. Blue eyes are a Paleolithic inheritance. Blonde hair is a Siberian legacy. White skin is a late agricultural adaptation. They did not evolve together. They did not spread evenly. And they did not define Europe until very recently. The European face is not an ancient symbol. It is a living archive, written by migration, shaped by environment, and carried, even today, into the future. If you want to understand what your DNA actually remembers, beyond myths, flags, and labels, subscribe to the channel. Because history doesn't live in books alone, it lives in us.